Welcome back to my channel. I'm your host, Nurse Lois. Um, I do have my pit bull next to me, so if you hear any kind of noises, that is my pit bull. Um, today's topic is going to be on knowledge that you can find in the books, in books. And so, uh, one of the books is entitled uh, "War on Debt" by John Avanzini. I will make sure I place a, a still picture of that book and what it looks like in the title. Um, on this video so that you can uh you know purchase the video and learn how to come out of debt with car payments and with your mortgage so on and so forth so uh maybe 30 years ago i was talking to god because i read a scripture where it says my people perish for lack of knowledge and i said to the lord in prayer i don't want to perish for lack of knowledge please give me knowledge in every area that i need knowledge in so my journey began with me picking up a book and reading it because a lot of knowledge was inside of a book. So um, the first book is um, A Steel Shot uh, entitled War on Debt by John Avanzini, um, A-V-A-N-Z-I-N-I. And John um, was a uh, Christian uh, banker, I think he's retired right now. The last time I looked, he was still alive. And um, he taught the body of Christ banker secrets and how to pay off a mortgage, how to pay off your car and come out of debt and be stress-free. So I read the book like over some 30 something years ago and it taught me how to pay off my house. It gave several strategies uh, today, I'm going to share the split payment uh, strategy, and uh, you can talk to your mortgage lender, find out if you can incorporate this strategy. Usually, when you start a mortgage, you should have already negotiated um, a strategy of, of split payment into the verbiage. But a lot of times lenders will still allow you to do split payment if you go and you talk to them first, okay? So this is how split payment strategies work. I'm not talking about paying extra for on the mortgage to knock the mortgage down. We're talking about split payments. This is a strategy that I used, okay? Um, say your mortgage is $1,000, just to say, okay? And your mortgage is due on uh the 15th of the month just just say okay we're just throwing a date out there um i would pay five hundred dollars on the first of the month and then pay the other 500 and make sure it hits right on the 15th the second payment would go strictly toward the principal and just completely knock the principal down every time you paid your mortgage. So I applied the split payment strategy and just knocked my principal down so fast. So the first $500 that I paid on the first went directly toward the interest. The, the second $500 that I paid to make sure it hit on the 15th completely went toward the uh the principal now people in the mortgage setting they already know these strategies they already know the principles but they're not going to volunteer this information and tell you why because they want your money they want you to pay as much as you can they don't want you to knock the principal down like that okay so that is the uh strategy that God put in my heart to use. But when you get the book, you'll see there's quite a few different strategies that you can apply and you can knock your uh, principal down in your mortgage and go ahead and knock that mortgage out. I paid my house off in 1994, okay? I was still young, but God said, pick up a book and read. I picked up the book and read, then I applied the strategy and it's all connected to living a stress-free life taking your money and doing other things with it that the spirit of god would have you to do okay so um what god had me to do was build my ministry that's what i did so 
and to help other people, buying them cars, buying people, helping people get houses and helping people uh, with clothes and food. I mean, he would just get up, I need you to go over here, help get this person a car, come over here, help, help this person pay their uh, rent, you know what I'm saying? All kinds of stuff God was having me to do with the money that I saved and I just obeyed God. I just did what God told me to do, okay? So I uh, just wanted to make sure I shared that it's called the split payment method. You can also apply the split payment method on your car note and just knock the principal off of your car note. It's it's better to negotiate split payments at the beginning of creating a contract um, with a, a mortgage lender or um uh, with uh, you know a car dealership is it's better to do it at the beginning but if you go and have a conversation with them tell them you want to apply the split payment method either they're going to say yes or no my mortgage lender let me do it even though i didn't start out at the beginning with that verbiage of wanting to do the split payment they said sure and they accepted the money and lois paid her her mortgage off okay so um, I just wanted to make sure I came to be a blessing to God's people and to the world. Um, God just put it in my heart to share that knowledge. Again, somebody um, needs that information and someone already reached out to me and stated that they had already prayed to God about it. So make sure you get that book, okay? I wish I could find the book right now, but I have been painting. I haven't personally been painting, but... I've had, you know, someone come in the house and repaint the house. So a little things are a little in disarray right now. I still have to put my uh, bookshelf back up, put my books back in there and find the, the book. But I put the picture of the book on uh, this video so that you'll know what it uh, looks like. Okay, now somebody else, one of my other subscribers asked me to talk about the holy books that I, uh, I read. And uh, I told you in another video that I read the Dead Sea Squirrel, uh, Scrolls and the Dead Sea Scrolls talks about Jesus uh, teachings. Um, he was teaching people in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, many, he was teaching people a lot of stuff, but there was a section there about he was teaching people how to do internal cleansing, um, how to do an enema. Oh, yes. They were cleaning out their bodies back in the biblical day. And Jesus was teaching people how to clean out their body. And as stated before, if all of the teachings of Jesus uh, fit into the Bible, the Bible would just be too big to pick up and carry. And I told you, I am a seeker of truth. I want the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. And I knew there were pieces and parts and stuff missing that we needed because I, I know wholeness when I see it. And so when I start picking up these other holy books, I said, ah, there's the section right there where Jesus was teaching on internal cleansing. I have to incorporate this into my healing ministry. See, God had me pick up these holy books because he was preparing me for my healing ministry. We can't talk about health and healing and not tell nobody how to clean their body out. So all this stuff about just laying hands on the sick, that's just a part of it. The other part is you're supposed to eat right and clean out your body. Okay. I just want to make sure um, I share that uh, with you because your girl is into being balanced, okay? And not not unbalanced. I'm into being balanced. Um, so I wanted to show you this other holy book. Um, it's my uh, Torah. Uh, we had some Jewish uh, rabbis come into my church many years ago. And the Jewish rabbis, uh, they actually bowed over to the Spirit of God inside of me. Um, ushered me over to the Torah, asked me if I ever read it before, and I said, no, sir. And they said, uh, it is going to be a blessing to you. And it has um, all of the original words of God before they were translated over into the King James Version. And so the Spirit of God just put in my heart to purchase it. And so here it is. This is the other holy book that I have. It's my Torah. Okay. It's my Torah, and you can get this online um, on Amazon. At this time, you know, at the time I purchased my Torah, I got it from the uh, rabbis. But you can, it's now available on um, Amazon. It's the Stone 
the stone edition. And the name that you're going to be actually looking for is the Kamish, C-H-U-M-A-S-H. -S -S Let me make sure I spelled that correctly. I go to the other part of this um, book. Hold on, guys, just a minute. This book is pretty heavy. And I'm trying to hold the camera on one hand and look at the correct spelling with the other. Um, that's what it looks like to me. Yep. And then on the front, you'll see where it says the Torah. You'll see it written out in gold. So this is what you're going to be looking for when you go to Amazon. Okay. And let me... And it reads from left to right because that's really how you're supposed to be reading not right to left and it has a lot of information in here stuff that wasn't added to our bible stuff that you need to know like you need to know there were more than 10 plagues of egypt you need to know there were 12. there was a plague of the killer bees nobody even put that into the ten commandments movie or anything like that. And it, it didn't make it into our Bible. But you need to know your God for real. Okay. There's a whole lot of stuff in here. Y'all need to really know. Because I believe in knowing God for real, for real. And I love my Bible. I read my Bible every night. Um, but you need uh, the Torah. Um, because you need to see some other stuff about your God that you didn't know. And I like to know people. You know. And. When I learn things about people, that's just me. I like to call out what I've learned. Like, so if you were my friend, I hung around you and I learned something new about you, I'll call it out. I'm like, you know what? I just learned something new about you. I learned this about your character. Or I learned this about your personality. I think it's good to know people. And I think it's good to know God. I don't think it's right that we don't know God for real, for real. I think something's wrong with that. And so in my ministry, I, I'm a seeker of truth and I like sharing truth. I am not putting down the Bible at all. I love my Bible. I read my Bible every day, okay? Um, but I want you to also, when you get a chance, to purchase um, this Torah on uh, Amazon because... I want you to know our Father in Heaven for real, for real. Not no fake for real or halfway for real. I want you to know Him for real, for real. You're going to see some stuff in there about how God set up marriage. How God set up marriage in the Torah is nothing like what they teach it in the Bible. Nothing like they teach it in the Bible. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, I had... Uh, there was a couple that I know went to my church. They didn't live too far from me. My kids grew up with their kids. Um, they went to the same school and everything. And the husband and wife were having some uh, issues. And so whenever the husband, and they were believers in Christ Jesus, whenever the husband wanted to do something that just didn't sit right in the wife's spirit, she would say to him, I think you're going the wrong direction. I don't think we need to do that, go that way. I think we need to go back in prayer. And so the husband took it as a sign of his wife was against him and she wasn't supporting him and she wasn't submitting to him and all that foolishness that they teach, you know, in the church. Cockamamie foolishness. You hear me? This woman sitting there doing what God designed her to do. And when I picked up my Bible, not my Bible, my Torah, and I read how God instituted marriage, God clearly states in the Torah 
that men act really fast and quick sometimes. They don't slow down and think and rationalize and they and they go ahead of God instead of partnering with God. And that woman is created to be like a barometer for that man, that godly woman. And so when the woman says, I, I don't, that don't feel right in my spirit. Or can we go back and pray and talk to God about it? That's a sign to the man that he missed it. That's a sign to the man that he missed it and that he's supposed to go back in prayer, talk to God and get the right response. So when he go back to God in prayer and get the right response and he go back to his wife and say, how about this? Or, you know, I went to prayer. This is what came in my spirit. How do you feel about this? And she, and she checked her spirit and she got peace in her spirit. That man know he on the right track. That's what the Torah says. Now, y'all know good and darn well, this teaching about marriage is not being taught in the church. They teaching the women to submit, clam up, shut up. The man is the head. She don't participate in anything with the marriage except she's just supposed to do what her, that darn man said to do. Even if it's cockamamie bullcrap. She's just supposed to submit, shut up, and do nothing. God said not so. That is not his word. And all that stuff they teaching in church about marriage is wrong. Some, some words were missing in the translation when it got to the Bible talking about marriage. And so when I got in my Torah and I read how God instituted marriage, I said, well, no wonder. There are so many divorces in the darn body of Christ. The man don't even recognize that the woman is actually doing what she's supposed to be doing. She's ordained by God. A godly woman is ordained by God to say, hey, that don't feel good in my spirit. That, I, I'm getting a check in my spirit. I think we need to go back to God in prayer. Something ain't right. Because, you know, a lot of times women are really super... Uh, they can pick up on stuff really quick. They, they're like real, their heart is tender toward God. They can pick up on the tenderness of God and, you know, when something ain't, when something's not quite right. So I just wanted to share that with you because I know, I know this area has not been taught properly in the body of Christ. And I don't know if these, uh, Preachers are going to ever tell the truth in that area because they, you know, they got that whole submitting and shutting your mouth and just obeying thing down pat. And that is not how God instituted marriage. He instituted the woman to speak up and say, uh-uh, I'm getting a check in my spirit. And, and women, y'all know naturally that's what we do anyway. We do that naturally. Like, uh-uh, we ain't doing that. Nope. Going the wrong way. Nope, nope, nope. We do that. We just auto, we automatically be like, nope. And so the man, he not supposed to get offended with that. He's supposed to know, okay, I missed it. Let me go back in prayer and find out what God actually want me to do. Because, you know, sometimes men, they won't go to God in prayer. They just be making decisions on their own. They don't go and, and bend their knees in their prayer closet and they ask God what they're supposed to do because they're men. And they, they're, they're head of the house. And they're going to make a decision. God said, not so. You're supposed to make every decision with God. Men. Yes, men. And women, you know, we're not supposed to be uh, nagging men. But if something's not right, you, you got to say something. You got to say uh, I'm not feeling that. I'm getting a check in my spirit on that. I think we need to go back in prayer. You know what I'm saying? Don't make the man feel bad, but just say, I think we need, both of us need to go back in prayer and talk to God about it until we get that thing right. Because I'm not feeling good in my spirit about that. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the Torah, everybody needs. Every believer in Christ Jesus needs it. And if you about to get married, thinking you want to get married... You need the Torah to find out what, how God really created uh, uh, marriage. So what I did for this couple is 
I let them borrow my Torah so the two of them could sit down and see how God really instituted, uh, created marriage to be and what it's supposed to look like. And uh, my God, they both are still together. And that man now understands that his wife was just doing what she was ordained to do, to speak up when something wasn't right. Or when that, her husband was going the wrong direction, she spoke up. She didn't clam her mouth and, and just submit to a whole bunch of foolishness and nonsense. She spoke up and said, hey, I think we need to go in prayer. Something's not right. I'm getting a check in my spirit. So he stopped looking at his wife like she was against him. And he started to look at her like, wow, you were walking in the will of God all this time and he realized he was the one out of order and he was the one that missed it and it's because many people are not taught um the word of God for real for real that's why I told y'all I'm a seeker of the truth I don't just be going by what folks be saying y'all folks be talking about some crap that don't even sound right you hear me God had me get that tour, get in there and dig in there and find out what he said for real, for real. And when I saw that, I said, Lord, have mercy. No wonder there are so many darn divorces in the darn body of Christ. Now, we are supposed to bless each other and submit to each other. But God gives clear instructions in the Torah how that's supposed to look. Okay, and he on purpose said that the wife is supposed to speak up and let that man know if he is going the wrong direction. And he let the husband know how he's supposed to look at the wife. So when people understand the will of God for real, for real, you can have longevity in your marriage, in, the, in your relationships. So, and the wife is never supposed to, you know disrespect her king or disrespect her priest of the high priest of the home never but she is supposed to speak up and let him know i'm nope going the wrong way nope mm -mm, not feeling it she's supposed to do that so this is uh nurse lois coming to you from the lois banks ministry and also two years ago man over 30 something years ago God was asking me to minister to like uh, famous leaders, pastors, ministers um, around the world because they were just so off balance when it came to health and nutrition. Everybody was talking about laying hands on the sick and you're supposed to do that. But nobody was talking about uh, complete balance and eating right, cleaning out the body. Okay. And all this other stuff we're supposed to be doing with our body. So. As a nurse, the, the Lord asked me to gather up quite a few books and just start shipping them out to all these preachers on TV and in these churches and to send them a, a letter, you know, from, from the Lord. So one of the books that um, I sent to a lot of ministers was entitled Miracle Food Cures from the Bible, okay? by Reese Dubbin, and um, told y'all I'm a researcher as part of my gift. God asked me to get the book. I got the book, and it has so many secrets inside, so many cures inside. I mean, just straight from, from the heart of God, and um, I sent that book to like a lot of people. One of them was to uh, the uh, owners of TBN, um trinity broadcasting on network and um they shared the book title with uh benny hen benny hen went ahead head and shared the book he got the book and shared it on his platform and you know people around the world was listening to uh benny hen and um then um i was just excited and happy that one act of obedience opened the door for millions of people to walk in health and healing and to have knowledge you know my whole platform is about let's put the knowledge in the people's hands let's let's equip the people and you know i stand in one of the fivefold 
uh, ministry. So I'm, I'm here to equip you. I'm here to, to grow you up in the power of God, in the word of God, and to equip you and hand you tools so that you uh, can succeed uh, in life. And that's what I do. I'm about my father's business. I don't believe in babying the saints um, because babying you and doing everything for you is not going to help you grow up. So I'll have compassion for you. And then I'll tell you, get up, get up, get up. Take this information that I'm sharing with you, apply it and win and win in life. So you're never going to see me babying you. I'm not going to do it. Because if I baby you, it's not going to help you. If I tell you to get up, drag yourself and get up and apply this information and win, that's what's going to help you. Okay. And of course, because I have compassion, I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to say, God, help them to do, help them to do the instructions, help, help them to get up. And when, because you know, we can't be no little babies. We can't be no cry babies walking with the Lord. We got to cut all that out. We do have an enemy out there. His name is Satan and his cohort demons. And we have to take um, all of the knowledge that God has provided for us. And we have to apply it and we have to use it. Um, so this is a nurse, a Lois coming to you from the Lois Banks Ministry. I also want to show this to you, this book to you as well. It's um, a book about Smith Wigglesworth. He was a very, very powerful man of God at that time. Uh, flowed in blind eyes, opening up creative miracles, which is the same uh, power that I walk in right now uh, with the Lord. And how I got that book is uh, one day I went to my church years ago and uh, you know, I was going to purchase some books from some very, very powerful men, men of God who walked the earth and they just did uh, powerful things in the earth, such as uh, John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, and I had already put it in my mind, I'm going to the bookstore and I'm going to purchase some books and I'm going to, you know, sit down and just start reading these books. I'm a, I'm a bookworm. I'm a, a science nerd. I love math and I like to read. That's just, I like research too. I'm a book person and you'll find a lot of information hidden in the book. Okay. And so, um, went into, uh, my church bookstore and the manager of the bookstore said, ma'am, the spirit of God just spoke to me, um, and told me to put whatever books you want in a bag. She's like, there's no limit, whatever it is you put in the bag and I'll pay for it. So I walked in the door and y'all had so many books. I went to every book that I went in there to purchase and to buy. And um, the manager of the bookstore put all those books in a, a bag and she paid for it. And I walked out the door. You know, God, it was so strategic in my development uh, in him. And so, yeah, I love books. There's so much information found um, in books, but you want to make sure that it's books written by men and women of God who accepted Jesus and they're filled with the precious Holy Ghost. And that what they're talking about lines up to the word of God, because I have heard stories of people who used to be in the word of God, got a hold of some books that wasn't written by Christian people and the demonic force that was written in them in those pages of those books got into the spirit of the person who once believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and they got off they got off the word so you got to make sure what you reading matches up to our bible and and is a part of the teachings of Christ that you can see it somewhere in the scripture, just like I just got finished talking to you about marriage. There are things in our Bible about marriage that we are supposed to be using. The Torah gives additional information about things that didn't make it into our Bible to bring the wholeness to what God was saying. And so, you know, you put the pieces parts together and then you, you work that thing. So, this is Nurse Lois coming to you from Lois Banks Ministry. Um, I just wanted to obey uh, the spirit um, of God. I have books, 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 so many 
books, y'all. Books, 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 books. Because I don't be shucking and jiving. I don't be playing in my walk with the Lord. I don't like lacking knowledge. I don't, I can't stand that. You know, um, I need to know. I need to know how to win and I need to know how to be successful in life. And um, I seek God for real. I don't be playing. So I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, most definitely uh, go get this holy book. It's a Torah, but it's called the Kamish. Okay. And I'm going to look in here again because I saw it earlier. C-H-U-M-A-S-H. That's the correct spelling. C-H-U-M-A-S-H. The Kamish. It's called the Kamish. But on the front, it's a part of the it's a part of the Torah. Okay. Listen, we have to help each other grow. We gotta help each other grow. And I want y'all to know my father in heaven like I know my father in heaven. I know God for real, for real. I don't like fake knowing nobody. Okay. If you somewhere in my life, I want to know you for real. Like, I really want to know who you are as a person. And um, I just enjoy knowing the details of people, not to be in nobody's business or anything like that. I just, how the, how, how the person, how they are, what makes the person who they are. Um, I just think it's precious when you know people that are like in your life, you know um and their personality and how they think and you know how they love and you know how they are so uh and it's beautiful to know your god like that you know you know a lot of this information is hidden from people you know satan don't want people to know this stuff you know you don't want people to know this stuff so i just want to make sure that I share my blessings with the world so that you can know your father for real, for real. And that you can walk in all of the blessings of God. So this is a nurse, a Lois, prophetess, a Lois, coming to you from the Lois Banks Ministry. God bless you.